I'm struggling a lot with inference questions. I've spent probably the most of my time studying for the LR section on them. And the ones that I guess might seem harder that have like a lot of different diagrams or conditionals, I'm able to, I studied like diagramming those and I can get those very quickly. It's the ones that you can't necessarily diagram that I have a really hard time doing. So I guess I'm wondering what do you think would be the best strategy for those? Because I don't think it's a lack of like studying them enough. I think I'm not studying it correctly. Sure. So when you spend a lot of time, how are you, in, how are you approaching them? Uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, drilling questions and I'm spending time like going back to all of the inference questions when I do a time section or even a practice test on them. And sometimes even after I've they've given me the correct answer. I just don't see how they came to that conclusion. Yeah, I hear you. Do you try to prephrase? Uh, on the inference questions, yes, but I, I feel like I can only do that when I have a diagram, Yeah. when I've written out a diagram. I hear that, yeah. I mean, that definitely lends itself more to diagramming. In the absence of prephrasing, what's your next step? Um, I go through each one individually, so these questions tend to take me the longest. And I think I'll like go through each question individually and try to see if it makes sense. And then usually I just answer like a trap answer because I'm confused. Where do these questions fall within this section? Like what number question are they? Um, it's not even necessarily like the most difficult in the middle. It can just be like any of the inference questions. Yeah, I mean, in the absence of a prephrase, it might just be evaluating the choices. It could simply be checking each one against the stimulus to see if it is reason a reasonable inference to see if it's supported by the stimulus. In the absence, of, you know, the absence of pre prephrase, there's not really much else to do. If you can see a connection between two parts, that's fantastic. As you said, formal logic lends itself to that very neatly. In other cases, it might just be connecting two parts in a non-formal logic way if there is some degree of overlap between two different parts. There, for example, there's one question where it talks about 500 million years in one section of it and then 100 million years in a different section of it. And due to the context of that question, there is overlap between those two facts because they happen with, there's no overlap in terms of their time ranges. And so it's possible to make an inference on that basis. But again, could just be scanning through the choices, looking for matches. Okay. One thing I'll say is, I'll, I'll ask you is, does it relate to, do you check the choices against each other ever? Um, sometimes when I'm only down to two, but not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. I, I would recommend really just more review, more review of those. Okay. There's not really a magic technique for those sorts of questions, but I will refer you to what I call the Socratic review method. And the Socratic review method is a method of really digging deep into your understanding of why you get something wrong or why you have difficulty with something. And when it comes to tempting wrong answers and discouraging right answers, there's a lot to play with there. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.